I said quite a lot is happening in the Nigerian TV space, and um, this has really, really improved the TV case finding. So from the 20, 25 percent um, treatment coverage that we had um, um, 2018, 2019, um, as of 2020, we were well, sorry, as of 2022, we're as high as 60 percent and it's even getting better in 2023. So quite a lot going on in, in, in the Nigeria. So under the USID funded um, implementation of which KNCV is implementing in some states, and then we have um, Institute for Human Virology and that sister NGO also implementing in some other states. In these two, um, these two organizations are currently implementing in about 18 states out of the 37 states in Nigeria. Now, the case finding, the active case finding, the community case finding in these states, uh, done both ways with the portable digital x-rays and then with the WHO4 symptom um, screening. So with the support from USID, we were able to procure 10 um, of these portable digital x-rays, which we deploy um, and use them um, actively to screen um, clients, but then that's not enough uh, for, for the population that we are subserving. So we also still use the WHO um, for symptom screening. But then the good thing is after using these portable digital x-rays for two years, we've been able to demonstrate that really it's a game changer. Not only are we able to find TB cases a lot earlier, we're also able to be more efficient in our case finding and um, the, the number needed to test is a lot lower than if we are using the WHO for symptom screening. So graciously, the national program has decided to scale up the use of the portable digital x-rays. And um, there are some plans in place to procure an additional 380 portable digital um, x-ray uh, machines, which will be used to um, have active case finding in all the states um, of the country. So as I said, it started as a proof of concept, but the good thing is it's going to be um, scaled up. So for now, we are still using the four symptom screening in addition to the portable digital x-rays where they are available. Now, funds are available for health workers to go into these communities and screen people. And, and when they are screened, um, of course, presumptives identified, their sputum are transported to the laboratories. Usually, um, there are also there are still some funds to transport this sputum to laboratories. Um, in, in some programs, the patients may have to go to the healthcare facility themselves, but then the, 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 the finding has been if we leave it to the um, healthcare workers to go themselves. There may be some loss along the way. Um, sometimes the healthcare, the patients may say they do not have um, um, transport to go. So we usually emphasize the fact that it's better to collect the sputum and take to the lab um, for the testing to be done. Now at the lab, we we have diagnostic tools available. Um, so sorry, before I even get to the lab. Um, at KNCV, there's something we also started piloting, um, the point of care test, even at the community level. So um, for some of our portable digital x-rays, we also paired them with um, a molecular diagnostics, either a TrueNAT or a TB lab platform, which we're able to use in the community. And at the spot there, after screening, we're able to test clients there. And the yield has also been shown um to be to be really great so those are some of the small things we are doing but then of course that's not at a national level and we are supporting the national program to see how all of this can be scaled up now the diagnostic tools available in nigeria um the the primary diagnostic diagnostic tool is the gene expert platform um, currently we have about 500 gene expert platforms spread across um, the country and um, that's usually our first point of call. But in recent years, we've also introduced the TB lamp platforms, um, usually the dual platforms. So we have um, about um, 37 of those in country presently, and procurement has been made for 
others which are also coming in um, very soon. We also have TB lamp platforms uh, available in country. And um, usually we even prefer prioritizing the TB lamp for community-based activities because of the high throughput. We're able to go to communities and at a go, we're able to test um, about 60 samples thereabout. Uh, and so no matter the number of presumptives we generate, we're able to clear them um, with the TB lamp platform. So those are some of the things that are, are available in country now. What can be done better? Of course, I say Nigeria is a pretty large country and um, some of the localities are still hard to reach. Um, these intensive activities that we are doing currently, it's only in 18 states. There are um, other states which will also benefit really from this. But as I said, the good thing is the national program is also scaling up some of these. We are getting about 380 um, PDX, uh, portable digital x-rays and then we really hope that will really, really help in closing the missing TB cases, um, especially in Nigeria. Thank you. For, for context, um, our lower government levels, we call them the local government areas, we have about 766 in Nigeria. And um, the idea was that each of them, each of those lower government levels should have a TB testing, um, a, 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 a gene expert um, platform so that um, access to molecular diagnostics will not be an issue. However, um, before 2018, 2019, th this was a challenge. At that time, we just had about 300 platforms. So even just about a third of um, the local government areas had a gene expert platform in them. Um, that was on the one hand. On the other hand, um, it was a new technology for us, so issues of breakdown, issues of um, optimization of the gene expert size, issue of power to even run the platforms were, were a big challenge. So we were not getting the best out of these gene expert um, 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 machines. And then the Sputum referral process to get to the laboratories um, in case there's no, there no gene expert site in another local government. Um, it wasn't also optimal as at that time. So we were missing quite a lot of cases. Now, as a country, we were really deliberate about improving um, the diagnostics um, 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 across all of the um, country. And so we, we invested in getting more GNSPAT platforms. Um, right now we have over 500. Not all of the local governments have now, but then we are also working on that. I think under 100 is on the way coming so that um, we'll be able to really scale up the gene expert um, coverage. Now, we also get, got better with the gene experts. Um, we also have the um, 10 color um, 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 options available, which is also able to detect um, pre ex DRTD. And then we also have the 20 module um, um, variants also available so that we can test more. Now, um, the optimization of the lab, the power issues, we are also very deliberate about them to see that almost all of our expert sites are functional at every given point in time. We, we, we found out that um, even though gene expert is good, it's very useful. Um, it may not be very suited for some particular locations. And that's why we had to branch out and started getting the true nuts and also getting the TB lamp platforms. There are areas that are really hard to reach. Electricity is an issue. Ambient temperature is really high. And for all practical purposes, gene expert platforms will, will not thrive, will not work very well in those places. So we sort of prioritized the true nuts platforms, which are more adapted to such conditions to those kind of areas. So it comes with a battery, with some solar charge, we're able to charge it and the ambient temperature does not affect it so much. So we're able to test it so that even in those very hard to reach locations, we're able to get them um, a molecular test available. Um, we also still found out that in some big states really, um, the sample generation is a lot. So even if you have a 20 model machine, sometimes you know, 500, 600 samples come in at a time, it's not easy to pro pro process them um, at one time with the gene expert. And that's why we now have the 
TV lamp platforms, which sort of mops up, and we also use them more for community-based activities. So we have improved at least three, four times the number of testing that used to be done on the GeneX part. Um, we are doing a lot more now. The, I know some other countries prioritize facility-based activities for use of the portable digital x-rays, but then in Nigeria, we were looking at the access to care and we realized, well, um, it's easier, it's better for us to take it out to those people who really have a hard time getting access to hospitals and um, and uh, healthcare. And so we're able to launch all 10 of them and um, 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 so we have radiographers who go out into communities and then sort of like a mini x-ray, get a mini outreach, sorry, get people together and they're able to shoot films and then screen the people using the um, artificial intelligence. And really for us, it's been something that we're really happy about. For us, it's really been a game changer. We're able to get people earlier in the course of the disease we're able to um, target our screening a lot better, and um, we have been able to get more TB cases from them. For the true not, as I'd also mentioned, the because of some of the peculiar terrain across Nigeria, um, um, the gene expert wasn't suited for some of these places, and so we brought the true not, and then we 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 made it in such a way that um, you know they are they are able to access. Um, those very hard to reach areas where access had always been an issue. And we're, um, we're really doing this particularly to reduce the microscopy usage in those places. And so we're able to also um, improve the optic, we're able to improve the optic of um, this molecular test using the true nut. Now, yeah, so uh, just, just as I said, um, and and for me, that's that's one of the things that I'm really optimistic about. A lot of changes are coming on in the TB space, and um, uh, as a country, for me, we will we, we will adopt these changes because um, I, I see us really ending TB um, um, before 2035, and um, we can't do this if we do not adopt these new technologies. Um, I was really happy what. Um, the portable digital x-ray has been able to show and i'm looking forward to the white scale up i'm also looking forward to one hp and um, the reduced treatment durations um i i believe that with all of this um of course we would we will do better in our control of tb some other places i'm looking forward to the 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 um vaccines for tb if we're able to get better vaccines and then you know, um, 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 preventive therapy for drug-resistant TB clients. Those are some of the things we really need fast as a country. And um, we will also be looking through some implementation research to see if we can bring up any, gener if we can generate any evidence that will be used um, to get all of this done. So that's, that's what I would say, uh, my final thoughts on this. Welcome friends to another episode of NTB Dialogues. Today, uh, we have a very special uh, guest amongst us. Uh, he is Dr. Sheshi Michael. He's a seasoned infectious disease expert supporting the national TB program in Nigeria at both national as well as subnational levels in the design, implementation, and evaluation of projects to improve TB control across the country. So welcome, Michael. Thanks a lot Thank for joining us. Thank you so Thank much, Bobby. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, yeah. I should definitely add that uh, uh, you are working as the KNCV, uh, which is, I, I'm sure everyone who has uh, been working with the TV uh, space for, on, I think it's uh, for uh, so almost a century, right? It's a century old organization. Am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, so that's KNCV true. has been on the, you know, really on the forefront of fighting TV for over a century. Uh, so he is working as uh, with KNCV Nigeria as a director, private sector TV initiative. So uh, very, very important, uh, Michael, to have this uh, conversation with you. So uh, let us begin, Michael, and let us please give us an overview. Of how, are the, how do we find TB in Nigeria as of 2023? Over to you. OK, thank you so much, uh, Bobby. Um, so, so in Nigeria, there, there's quite a lot of work going on um, in the TB space, especially as regards to um, active TB case search. Um, for quite a number of years, we're not doing so great. Um, that was up to 2018, 2019, 
we were just finding about 20, 25% of our um, incident TB cases uh, on a yearly basis. So um, there was some deliberate efforts to um, get the TB cases early. Uh, and so a lot of active case finding initiatives um, have been implemented in the country. At facility level, um, we have what we call um, TB screeners, um, some low level staff who are actively screening um, clients who come to the facilities and looking for the signs and symptoms of TB. And that has really improved um, the case finding so, so that patients who are with TB do not come to the health facility and go away with their TB. Now at the community level, a lot of community-based activities are also going on, house to house TB case search. We also have um, outreaches, uh, contact investigation, trying to get the TB cases even from the homes as early as possible. Now, um, in recent years, we've also included um, digital technologies in our active TB case search. So we now have hotspot maps, um, uh, which we use, which sort of targets um, our community-based activities so that the efficiency is a lot better. We have also tried to introduce um, portable digital x-rays with artificial intelligence also for screening so that TB cases can be um, found as early as possible. So as I said, quite a lot is happening in the Nigerian TB space and um, this has really, really improved the TB case finding. So from the 20, 25% um, treatment coverage that we had um, um, 2018, 2019. Um, as of 2020, we, well, sorry, as of 2022, we're as high as 60% and it's even getting better in 2023. So quite a lot going on in, in, in the Nigeria. Thank you so much, uh, Michael. Let's hope uh, this momentum goes on. And, uh, yeah. you know, as we there's a gap between those who are currently being left out. How can we do active case finding better? So we want to know what's happening and how can we really improve on reaching the unreached or reaching out to the missing uh, cases, you know, in Nigeria who are not able to, who are not currently as part of the program. And then we mm -hmm. can look at what is happening to those people who are coming to the lab and how can we improve mm -hmm. that? So first mm -hmm. is how 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 is Nigeria and you all trying to take left to the people. Let's talk about that. Okay. All right. So thank you. So uh, so as I said, quite quite a lot of things going on. And um, you know, for for Nigeria, usually um, we start out activities as a proof of concept, and then if it works, we are able to now scale up to um, cover the whole country. Uh, of course, Nigeria is well a pretty large country, above two hundred million people currently. So. When we start activities, we usually start small and then we 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 scale up. For for now, um, under so so under the USID funded um, implementation of which KNCV is implementing in some states, and then we have um, Institute for Human Virology and that sister NGO also implementing in some other states. In these two, um, these two organizations are currently implementing about 18 states out of the 37 states in Nigeria. Now, the case finding, the active case finding, the community case finding in these states are uh, done both ways with the portable digital x rays and then with the WHO4 symptom um, screening. So, with the support from USID, we're able to procure 10 um, of these portable digital x rays which we deploy um, and use them um, actively to screen um, clients. But then that's not enough uh, for, for the population that we are subserving. So we also still use the WHO um, for symptom screening. But then the good thing is after using these portable digital x-rays for two years, we've been able to demonstrate that really it's a game changer not only are we able to find tb cases a lot earlier we're also able to be more efficient in our case finding and um the the number needed to test is a lot lower than if we are using the who 4 symptom screening so graciously the national program has decided to scale up the use of the portable digital x-rays and um there are some plans in place to procure an additional 380 portable digital um, X-ray uh, 
machines, which will be used to um, have active case finding in all the states um, of the country. So as I said, it started as a proof of concept, but the good thing is it's going to be um, scaled up. So for now, we are still using the four symptom screening in addition to the portable digital x-rays where they are available. Now, funds are available for health workers to go into these communities and screen people. And, and when they are screened, um, of course, presumptives are identified. They are put on are transported to the laboratories, usually, um, there are also there are still some funds to transport this putum to laboratories. Um, in, in some programs, the patients may have to go to the healthcare facility themselves, but then the 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 finding has been if we leave it to the um, healthcare workers to go themselves, there may be some loss along the way. Um, sometimes the healthcare the patients may say they do not have um, um, transport to go. So we usually emphasize the fact that it's better to collect the sputum and take to the lab um, for the testing to be done. Now, at the lab, we, we have diagnostic tools available. Um, so sorry, before I even get to the lab, um, at KNCV, there's something we also started piloting, um, the point of care test, even at the community level. So um, for some of our portable digital x-rays, we also paired them with um, a molecular diagnostics, either a TrueNAT or a TB lab platform, which we're able to use in the community. And at the spot there, after screening, we're able to test clients there. And the yield has also been shown um, to, be, to be really great. So those are some of the small things we are doing. But then, of course, that's not at a national level. And we are supporting the national program to see how all of this can be scaled up. Now, the Diagnostic tools available in Nigeria. Um, the the primary diagnostic diagnostic tool is the GeneXpert platform. Um, currently, we have about five hundred GeneXpert platforms spread across um, the country, and um, that's usually our first point of call. But in recent years, we've also introduced the TB lamp platforms. Um, usually, the dual platforms. So we have um, about. Um, 37 of those in country presently and procurement has been made for others which are also coming in um, very soon we also have tb lamp platforms uh, available in country and um, usually we even prefer prioritizing the tb lamp for community-based activities because of the high throughput we're able to go to communities and at a go we're able to test um, about 60 samples thereabout uh, and so no matter the number of presumptives we generate, we're able to clear them um, with the TB lab platform. So those are some of the things that are, are available in country. Now, what can be done better? Of course, I said Nigeria is a pretty large country and um, some of the localities are still hard to reach. Um, these intensive activities that we are doing currently, it's only in 18 states. There are um, other states which will also benefit really from this. But as I said, the good thing is the national program is also scaling up some of this. We are getting about 380 um, PDX, uh, portable digital x-rays. And then we really hope that will really, really help in closing the missing TB cases, um, especially in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michael. Uh, really uh, very impressed with the kind of progress which has been made. And of mm. course, uh, there's a longer way ahead. But the best part which I like about uh, what you just said is how the pilot is being done. And when the evidence comes, Nigeria is scaling it up as well, based upon yeah. the evidence, which is really yeah. so important. Good to see that Nigeria is using cortical x-rays and more are going to come. So mm. over to you now. Sorry, I did a lot of talking, but it is really <laughs> great to hear about the impact which these x-rays and yeah. the tests are mm. having in the community. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so so I think I'll, I'll start with the molecular diagnostics and then um, before I go to the x-rays. Um, as I said, um, pre-2018, 2019, um, the gene expert optimization was um, really poor across the country. Now, um, for, for context, um, our lower government levels, we call them the local government areas, we have about 766 in Nigeria. And um, the idea was that each of them, each of those lower government levels should have a T 
TB testing, um, a, 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 a gene expert um, platform so that um, access to molecular diagnostics would not be an issue. However, um, before 2018, 2019, th this was a challenge. At that time, we just had about 300 platforms. So even just about a third of um, the local government areas had a gene expert platform in them. Um, that was on the one hand. On the other hand, um, it was a new technology for us. So issues of breakdown, issues of um, optimization of the gene expert size, issue of power to even run the platforms were, were a big challenge. So we were not getting the best out of these gene expert um, 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 machines. And then the Sputu referral process to get to the laboratories um, in case there's no laboratory, there's no gene expert site in another local government. Um, it wasn't also optimal as at that time. So we were missing quite a lot of cases. Now, as a country, we were really deliberate about improving um, the diagnostics um, 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 across all of the um, country. And so we, we invested in getting more genus part platforms. Um, right now we have over 500. Not all of the local governments have now, but then we are also working on that. I think under 100 is on the way coming so that um, we'll be able to really scale up the gene expert um, coverage. Now, we also get, got better with the gene experts. Um, we also have the um, 10 color um, 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 options available, which is also able to detect um, pre ex DRTD. And then we also have the 20 module um, um, variants also available so that we can test more. Now, um, the optimization of the lab, the power issues, we are also very deliberate about them to see that almost all of our expert sites are functional at every given point in time. The sputum diagnostics, we've really gotten a lot better um, in, the sputum diagnostic, in the sputum referral system. Um, and uh, now there's some funds available, a mechanism available to make sure that whatever sputum is, pre um, is um, produced at any site, there's a mechanism to take them to a lab. So I, I would not have in specific figures, um, but then there has been a dramatic increase um, in the molecular testing for 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 the country. Um, uh, at some time in the past, um, we we used to maybe test just about 700,000 um, 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 sputo in a year, but right now. Um, we, we test close to three, four million sputum um, on a yearly basis. Yeah, yeah. So, so the 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 it's it's really gone gone upwards, and we are doing a lot better now. We 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 found out that um, even though gene expert is good, it's very useful. Um, it may not be very suited for some particular locations, and that's why we had to branch out and started getting the true nuts and also getting the TB lamp platforms. There are areas that are really hard to reach. Electricity is an issue. Ambient temperature is really high. And for all practical purposes, gene expert platforms would, would not thrive, will not work very well in those places. So we sort of prioritized the true nuts platforms, which are more adapted to such conditions to those kind of areas. So it comes with a battery, with um, solar charge. We're able to charge it, and the ambient temperature does not affect it so much. So we're able to test it. So that even in those very hard-to-reach locations, we're able to get them um, a molecular test available. Um, we also still found out that in some big states, really, um, the sample generation is a lot. So even if you have a 20 model machine, sometimes you know, 500, 600 samples come in at a time, it's not easy to pro pro process them um, at one time with the gene expert. And that's why we now have the TB lamp platforms, which sort of mops up, and we also use them more for community-based activities. So we have improved at least three, four times the number of testing that used to be done with the gene expert, um, we are doing a lot more now. For the portable digital x-ray, I would also not be able to give you um, absolute numbers uh, because as I said, 
we just have 10 platforms currently and um, the, the use is not across all of the states in the country. But then we, we were able to implement and part of what we showed the national TV program is that see, in terms of efficiency of testing, this is a lot more efficient. And, um, and um, the number needed to test where the, where you would have missed some TB cases, you're able to get them a lot earlier. Um, for the WHO for symptom screening, you need to test about ten, but with the um, PDX platform, you only you only need to test about four. So the efficiency is a lot better. And when we showed what we're able to do, so for the PDX, we screen an average of fifty three persons daily. And you know the cascade goes like that, and we're able to do a lot with the ten platforms that we have. And the national program also did a projection, and they are hoping that with the three hundred and eighty that are coming, we should be able to diagnose at least eighty thousand TB cases on a yearly basis just from the portable digital entry. So those those are those are some of the considerations. Those are some of the things that we put into context, and that's that's. That those those are the benefits of these new tools and the new technologies. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Michael. This really gives us a very good sense. And uh, sorry to put you on the spot with the you mm. know, but but we really did get a sense of how dramatic has been the increase in finding TV and how these tools are really how these tools are uh, how these tools and how appropriate tools to reach out to the unreached are really mm. making a huge difference, which is really clear. Yeah. So, Michael, just for clarification, you said fifty three. Uh, uh, screens are, uh, people are screened every day. So per per X ray machine, right? Yeah, per X ray. Yeah, per per X ray. That's great. Per X -ray. And yeah. and uh, you mentioned earlier in the conversation about the USAID supported uh, uh, rollout. So uh, is it what is it was it anyway part of the INTP project of the Stop TV partnership and USAID? Yes, it was. It it was yeah, yeah, it was part of the INTP um, um oh. project from Stop TV partnership. Yeah, as you know, the WHO uh, Director General um, yeah. Yeah. High Level Initiative in 2018 had launched uh, Find dot Treat dot on Find Treat on. So that clearly said that uh, by 2027. Uh, all the microscopy must be replaced with molecular test. And the uh, second goal was uh, a people-centered uh, response. And there were a lot, it's, it's a very big agenda. But um, I, uh, so can you just tell us, like, to, is microscopy still being used in uh, Nigeria? And all right. So so for, for the INCP, um, this happened in Nigeria um, between 2021, late 2021, and then all through 2022. And um, the there were three things that were really introduced, new, three new um, technologies and tools. So the first was the portable digital X-ray, and then the next was the TrueNAT platforms, which we did not have in Nigeria before that time, and then the third was the shorter um, regimen for TP for the TB preventive therapy. Now for the portable digital X-rays, um, as I had said, ten came in, and um, we prioritized their use for community activity the case finding. Uh, I know some other countries prioritize facility-based activities for use of the portable digital x-rays, but then in Nigeria, we were looking at the access to care and we realized, well, um, it's easier, it's better for us to take it out to those people who really have a hard time getting access to hospitals and um, and uh, healthcare. And so we're able to launch all 10 of them and um, 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 so we have radiographers who go out into communities and then sort of like a mini x-ray, get a mini outreach, sorry, get people together and they're able to shoot films and then screen the people using the um, artificial intelligence. And really for us, it's been something that we're really happy about. For us, it's really been a game changer. We're able to get people earlier in the course of the disease we're able to um, target our screening a lot better, and um, we have been able to get more TB cases from them. For the true nuts, as I'd also mentioned, the because of some of the peculiar terrain across Nigeria, um, um, the gene expert wasn't suited for some of these places, and so we brought the true nuts, and then we 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 made it in such a way that um, 
you know, they are, they are able to access um, those very hard to reach areas where access had always been an issue. And we're, um, we're really doing this particularly to reduce the microscopy usage in those places. And so we're able to also um, improve the optic, we're able to improve the optic of um, this molecular test using the TrueNAT. Now for the um, TB preventive therapy, um, Nigeria wasn't doing so great in terms of um, placing people on TPT. Um, uh, usually at the end of the year, when we are making a report to, to the WHO, sometimes we'll be reporting 10,000 people placed on um, um, INH, um, which was really small compared to the population. But then um, with the, um, um, the INTP, and the 3HR, which was introduced at that time, um, we're able to see a much better uptake uh, of, of TPT, um, almost 10 times um, what we were doing before. At least 100,000 people were placed on TPT in 2022, uh, compared to about 10, I think 11,000 the year before. So there was really a great um, improvement in the uptake of um, the TB preventive therapy. And in fact, that has got us thinking, let's even make this better. So Nigeria is also trying out the 1HP now, which is even shorter than the 3HR, which um, we are hoping would also get more people to start these drugs. So the INTP was something that really, really um, gave us um, an insight into how things can be done better. And it was a proof of concept. All of the technologies that were introduced have been scaled up um, in, in Nigeria. Now for microscopy. Um, yeah, from, from, where we are, from where we are coming, um, uh we we i think by 2018 we're still having um about 50 percent of our of our of our presumptives tested with afb um because we didn't have these um expert platforms um, readily available and the new tools were not also there so but we'll be very deliberate about um um ensuring that um, gene expert is our first um, diagnostic tool for everybody and um we've done uh, we've we've increased dramatically um i don't have the exact figure when it comes to presumptive but um if you got that can really readily come to my head the proportion of um, all the tb cases that were diagnosed in 2021 using the gene experts was um, about 76 percent about 76 percent yeah so um of the 24 percent we still have those that were clinically diagnosed and then a few percentage of that um using um, afb so we're actively working to phase out afb as a diagnostic tool in nigeria of course we still have pockets of places where we don't have full coverage for the molecular tests so they still use afb but definitely not up to 10 percent of um, of of the people that require a molecular test get um, AFP done. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks a lot, uh, Michael. Uh, this is really important. And uh, thanks a lot for sharing on INTP. And uh, we really believe these, as you rightly said, the, these pilots, which have shown the impact, must be really scaled up because the time clock is ticking and lives are at stake. We really need to uh, uh, make sure that these get scaled up. But also, um, these are important lessons and inspirations for other countries to adapt, to look at if it is relevant and take what is relevant and work out for them. Wonderful. So, um, so Michael, can you quickly tell us about the treatment regimens which are being rolled out in Nigeria, the 146, uh, what's happening? And also, um, uh, what progress has happened in terms of community engagement? Is the response people-centered? Yeah, thank you. So, so I'll start with the 1 by 4 by 6 by 24 response. Um, I'll, I'll take it in the other order. I'll start with the six. That's for the um, um, treatment for drug-resistant TB. Um, so we have a very robust um, drug-resistant TB program um, in the country, and um, we've been quick to adopt um, the WHO recommendations and um, also align with the global trends. So for 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 Nigeria, um, we, we had started some pilots on BPAL, that was in 2021. Yeah, we, we did a pilot on BPAL and 
the 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 outcome was really great um, we had treatment success of about 90 percent which is way higher than what we have with our conventional regimen um KSCV also piloted that at that time and we're able to you know give the national program and so we adopted PIPA for um implementation in Nigeria now at programmatic level Nigeria has decided that from 1st of November that's next month 1st of November 2023 all drug resistant TB patients, their primary um, um, care will be with the BPAL M and then the BPAL for um, um, those with fluoroquinolone resistance. So we are transiting from the nine months um, and the, or the longer regimen to the six month regimen for drug resistant TB. And it's something that we're really happy about. The toxicities are a lot less. Um, the cure rate is way better and then the adherence to treatment is also better so it's something that we are happy about for the transition to um one hp uh, or, or the weekly dosing um for 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 the tb preventive therapy um as i said we we are just um starting more or less like a pilot the use of um one hp um we'll do this across five states in the country we actually got a donation from um, Orem Institute um, through their Impact for TB um, project, um, about 70,000 um, doses of the um, 1HP. So we're starting that out in about five states in the country. And based on that, um, if we're able to generate the, the, the evidence required, we'll be able to scale up um, across all the other states in Nigeria. For the four months um, treatment for drug susceptible TB, I think it's something that is still in discussion with the national TB program. How far that discussion has gone, I, I really don't know so much, uh, but, but then I know it's something as evidence is coming from other countries across the, the world, Nigeria would also look into it, probably do something as an operational research. And if it works for us, we will transit um, there. So for Six, six um, for the BPAL, that starts in November in about two, three weeks' time. For 1HP, as soon as we get the evidence from, from the uh, pilots currently going on, I'm sure we'll also transit to that. And then the four months of uh, treatment for DSTB, that will go on um, later when we get some more evidence. Now for the community in, um, um, involvement in all of this, it's something that... Um, we're also getting um, 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 more um, clarity on, on that. So a lot of things were happening at a point in time, but there was no structured engagement for the community implementers uh, as at that time. So we have a lot of community-based organizations. So if you want to implement something in that community, you go through them and you're able to implement. And we really didn't have a structured way of getting you know, the people affected by TB um, involved. But then we also realized that, and um, in fact, um, we, we we just currently con concluded, recently concluded the global fund application for the next round, which will be starting in 2024. And that was one of the things that came out strong. The community players have to be more involved in our engagement and it has to be structured. So. There is a network of people living with TB, which we have engaged as a country, and they would also be the ones to sort of drive all of this community engagements, advocacy, resource mobilization, and just looking at how to get TB treatment across to the people that need it the most. So we're also hoping that um, we will do a lot more better, we'll do better um, on that in terms of um, engagement of the community. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Michael. Really amazing to see, get an overview from you, um, mm. especially from the front lines, as I consider you yeah. a game changer and wonderful that, uh, you know, so much is happening in Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, so any the final thoughts, any anything else which you'd like to add before we wrap up? Yeah, so uh, just, just as I said, um, and and for me, that's that's one of the things that I'm really optimistic about. A lot of changes are coming on in the TB space, and um, uh, as a country, for me, we will we, we will adopt these changes because um, 
I, I see us really ending TB um, um, before 2035, and um, we can't do this if we do not adopt these new technologies. Um, I was really happy what um, the portable digital X-ray has been able to show, and I'm looking forward to the wide scale up. I'm also looking forward to uh, one HP and um, the reduced treatment durations. Um, I, I believe that with all of this, um, of course, we would we will do better in our control of TB. Some other places I'm looking forward to the 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 um, vaccines for TB. If we're able to get better vaccines and then you know, um, 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 preventive therapy for drug-resistant TB clients. Those are some of the things we really need fast as a country. And um, we will also be looking through some implementation research to see if we can bring up any, if we can generate any evidence that will be used um, to get all of this done. So that's, that's what I would say, uh, my final thoughts on this. Thank you so much, Michael. Absolutely, totally agree and echo and fully support. Let us hope and let us pray that we really have a very effective and very safe TB yeah. vaccine, which can really, yeah. you know, halt the spread of uh, the infection. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, absolutely all what you said about uh, the, you know, more research for new tools and diagnostic and evidence. Wonderful. And, um, and full force to you and all your team, Michael, in deploying the best of tools we already mm. have so that mm. what you know we don't miss out on these opportunities like right? so yeah. much has happened in nigeria so much mm. more is well, i hope is going to come very soon yeah. with yeah. the leaders like you on the ground thanks yeah. a lot michael for speaking Thank with you. us a real personal honor to have you uh, you know uh, speak with me and uh, look forward to conversing when more progress has happened uh, on the ground thanks a lot all the best thank you, you. thank you all right thank you so much yeah bye, -bye.